YouTube, what the crap's going on, Heir of Carthage here, and welcome back. I'm going to have a good video for you today, teaching you how to get started with Marcus Wolfhart. Now, inevitably, whenever I do some type of campaign content, <laughs> there are usually comments from someone saying, how come you didn't play the other person, or this faction? Everybody likes this. Okay, let me explain a few things real quick. Number one, most of my experience thus far has been with Wolfhart, so I'm going to start with him. But yes, there will be a video for Gorok and also for Nakai the Wanderer. But, like I said, starting with Wolfhart because I have a little more understanding of how to play it. And the whole idea of this is for me to give you some tips on how to get started. Now, that said, also the Empire rework stuff is still under embargo. I can't show you any Old World Mortal Empires gameplay right now, okay? It's still under embargo. That'll be out soon enough but it's not something that I'm allowed to show to you right now. So if you're here asking why it's not that, that hopefully explains it. Anyway, let's Drum get Wolfheart here. I'm going slain. to keep his um, battle difficulty on hard and campaign difficulty on hard. He's a hard start. If you're going to play this guy on very hard or legendary, it will be quite challenging. I'm putting it on hard just to give you an example on how to start on those other ones. You're obviously going to have to do either what I do or something better and do it better because the difficulty is turned up. Now, what are you going to have going for you? You start at the Scorpion Coast, you have a, um, a port, you're going to immediately be facing off against a large number of Lizardmen, and you're going to have to use some of Wolfhart's special abilities in order to be successful. Now, rather than sit here on the screen and talk about all the things that he does, let's jump in and let me show you. Oh, and I can show you the cinematic. Spoiler. The jungle continent of Lustria lies west across the great ocean. The first men to land upon these shores ransacked an ancient temple, filling their ships with golden treasures. Word spread of their wealth, and others were eager to follow. Fueled by greed, men of the Empire ventured deeper into the jungle's heart. The land of beasts ravaged and plundered for its riches. It will not be without consequence. The jungle stirs. A cold-blooded fury rising to punish the invaders. In the temple cities of Lustria, the lizardmen enact a ritual to call upon their mighty guardian. For the Wanderer roams Lustria once more. The spirit of the jungle made manifest. A reckoning has come. Only the strongest will survive the coming bloodshed. Yeah, trust me, with his bow being... Having voyaged across the great ocean on the Emperor's command, I shall tame this jungle-infested continent and plunder it for the treasures it holds. The near unimaginable wealth of these lands is dispatched home through the coastal colonies, but recent raids by the lizard beasts have set the Empire back, and I expect further attacks. Other enemies loom nearby, 
Savage orcs, no less, who raid nearby abandoned cities. These ancient places are sure to harbor more riches, so are prime locations for colonization. But we must be aware that the lizard beasts dominate these jungles. For our colonies to survive their threat, reinforcements will be needed from home. The time of opportunity is now. Lustria and its dangers await. Anything that stands before me in the hope of defeating the Empire will meet its end by my bow. It is the Emperor's will. Okay, now there's a few things there that Wolfheart says that are very true. The lizard beasts definitely own the jungle. So get ready to fight a lot of lizards. So, if you're going to be successful, I'm going to give you a couple of strategy points. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Um, and his other point about needing reinforcements, also very true. Let's get started. Marcus Wolfhart. Here's his start position. He's got his uh, temple back here, and uh, it's a port city as well. It's going to be very handy to you. You can see you get a pretty decent starting income, which means you can expand Marcus's initial army. Your recruitment level is going to take a long time to build up, and you're surrounded by enemies that are statistically quite superior, depending on how you're going to stack things up. And then the higher you turn up your game difficulty, the more disparaging those statistics are going to be between your measly the little state troops and um, lizards. Now, even skinks at this point are a pretty big danger in high numbers to your state troops, and Saurus warriors are an enormous danger. So, what is the initial starting strategy that I think for Marcus Wolfhart? Well, I think immediately, obviously, you're going to clear out these lizards. However, the as for just a starting battle, you can see that this starting battle is a little more difficult than your typical starting battle. You have to take down a Saurus warrior, a Bastilodon, and a, um, <laughs> and a Saurus Old Blood. Now, you do get some good tools to help you get there. Huntsman, War Wagon, and Wolfheart. Let me show you how to use them. Alright, here we are on the battle map. I'm going to show you the deployment. I have my swordsmen on the flanks, my spearmen in the middle, so they can be flexible to take on that Bastilodon. I have my archers in the second line. Archers are short range and relatively crappy versus anything other than, you know, say like javelin skinks or something like that. So that's what I hold them in reserve to use them for. Huntsmen, on the other hand, are very helpful against large. All right, their arrows are going to be much more damaging, and they have a bonus versus large. Wolfheart, also bonus versus large and bonus versus armor, so use them accordingly. Now, Wolfheart is able to vanguard deploy, as is uh, this Huntsman unit, so I've put them a little further forward. Let's start the battle. With Wolfheart, a lot of times I like to take him off fire. We'll make sure he's picking the right target, so I'm going to immediately take out the Bastilodon because it is the biggest threat to my success here. We're going to pull some other tools into use while Wolfheart gets started shooting. I'm going to bring up this War Wagon. It actually has pretty good range at 130. The War Wagon is also going to tart the Bastilodon here. Made a mistake. We fired at the wrong target for the first hit. Um, while it's still a good distance away, we want to use the uh, Focus Shot here. Focus Shot is not um, the same as... Uh, we got to watch out for the uh, javelins on those skinks as well. So I'm going to back up because those hand... Uh, <laughs> the wagons will take a lot of damage. So we got to back up. I've waited a little too long to pull back. So we're going to fall back. Let's dodge this hit. There you go. So you can use Wolfheart to dodge fairly effectively. And we're going to pull all the enemies into range. And try and get that Bastilodon tangled up with her spears. We're going to keep our huntsmen away from this fight. Let's send the spearmen forward to engage the Bastilodon. And then we're going to have to throw some swordsmen in here to help against the infantry as well. The Saurus warriors are on the way. We need to be relatively quick. Alright, let's get Wolfheart back. We're going to start targeting the Bastilodon. I'm going to use my archers to start pulling down the, um, the skink javelins that are near the back because that's going to be one of the only targets they're good at. So we've got to take down the Bastilodon quickly. So I've got focused fire from the War Wagon, from Wolfheart, all coming in at the Feral Bastilodon. And he is dropping very quickly. But you can also see our infantry is suffering very badly in this fight. With the Bastilodon nearly on the ground here, he is almost dead. 
We're going to change our strategy. I'm going to move my war wagon immediately behind some of the infantry. And I'm going to do the same thing with my bowmen. Start moving them to the flank. Though we lost a spear unit almost immediately. Our swordsmen, fortunately, are holding out a lot better. This Bastilodon could come back. I'm going to pump another couple shots into it. I'm getting my archers into a good firing position. The Bastilodon is almost dealt with, and I've almost got um, my ability up for Wolfheart. These archers need to come a little further to the flank. These guys are in a good firing position. Same thing here. Let's get our war wagon firing. The, uh, the enemy lord is not really in a good position for me to shoot. I'm going to hit my own troops. I'm going to go ahead and target some of the infantry. I'll just fire at them. The Stilodon is dead, so it is no threat. You can see Wolfheart now just firing into the infantry. We've taken one skink unit off the field, so we're going to move our units around to get in a better firing position. You can see Wolfheart getting some great shots into the flank of those infantry. When he gets into their flank, Although he's specifically anti-large, his uh, projectiles will penetrate and cause um, extended damage. You can see now, though, our swordsmen are starting to falter entirely. We're going to have to do some skirmishing with Wolfheart. Um, the speed on the uh, Saras Old Blood isn't quite good enough to catch Wolfheart because of his fleet-footed attribute. Use that fleet-footed attribute to your advantage. We're going to clear out all the lizard infantry. I'm going to go ahead and put him on fire at will so he'll skirmish up that Saras Old Blood. I'm going to put all my units on fire at will now, actually. We do have focus shot, but it's going to take me too long to stop and use it. But we are going to just keep all of our skirmish units away from the Lizardmen. Now we'll start to focus fire on the Saurus. Some of the units are coming back from routing. You can take your war wagons and use them as a cheap melee to slam into regrouped infantry. As long as it's not a Saurus warrior, it should take them off the battlefield relatively quick. Bring these swords back. We'll just use them to help protect all of our archers while we take care of business. We can now use Focus Shot because the Saurus has given us some distance. Again, we're not going to let him engage any of our units. Let's bring the War Wagons over here to help. There we go. Focus Shot was quite effective. War Wagons are pretty good against single unit entities. And here you can see what's a pretty difficult fight. We won it in a fairly convincing manner. I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop the uh, Saras Old Blood. That way, whenever there's an auto resolve coming up, the Old Blood is uh, not part of it. We're going to take him completely off the battlefield, same as the Feral Bastildon. Neither one of them will be causing additional casualties. He is gone. Okay, there we go. All right, we made it out of the first battle, and this is going to be one of your major income sources is battles. You need to win a bunch of them. And I mean a bunch of them. We got a pennant here, which is going to give magic resistance to one of the units. I don't know that this is of huge value to any of our units right now. No time for human Your replenishment's going to be slow, so I don't recommend doing the pardon captives okay. thing. And honestly, I kind of wish that CA would recoup this. I don't understand how pardoning a captive you causes you to replenish more slowly. Men are reluctant to join the ranks of this army. Okay. Like I said, I don't understand how that hurts the replenishment rate. No time for human I wish they would change that. So we're going to kill them, get the extra leadership. Now we are getting ready to move along here. Another quick campaign tip for those who are relatively new, this is the camera settings. If you don't like things moving around slowly, you can, uh, like on your own faction, I can turn off, um, I can turn animations up to the fastest. And for all these other factions, for instance, fastest. You can set how much you want to see of the other factions. Same thing for things you're at war with. Maybe at war you want to see more moves, you know, so I can leave it kind of like this. And this will help your turn-ins be faster and help your stuff move around the map. Anyway, another quick tip. So we've defeated um, we've defeated the initial armies um, from, <laughs> from Laxlum faction here. We need to finish them off. And there is a pretty decent garrison over here at Chotek as well. If I wait a turn... This army is going to get um, some troops back. And if we take a look here, it's going to use up 41% of my movement distance. I think we're safe to get in here and hit this faction and then get back out and begin replenishment and recruiting. I don't want this to get another lord. So you can see here, I'm going to do the auto resolve. I'm going to just take the leadership gain because I want as much replenishment as possible. 
I'm going to push back out here. Um, you can merge these swordsmen, um, but I'm not going to just for the moment because I don't have a huge need to. This is the way I like to recruit in here. I'm going to get two more swordsmen because they're going to be the backbone of our army. And then I'm going to want a free company militia because it's a great support unit early in this campaign. So that's the way I like to recruit. Let me end a turn and I'll show you what we do next. Oh, just real quickly, obviously the technology tree. The new technology tree for the Empire is very nice. I really like what they've done with it. Um, but there is a couple of tips I'm going to give you early. I think that some of your best upgrades early are going to be um, this state-issued infantry armor and the state-issued weapons. The state-issued weapons gives you an extra four melee defense, which is very, very important. And then the state-issued uh, infantry armor. 15 armor is a big deal, especially when you're going up against um, a lot of units like Saurus and other stuff that don't necessarily have huge... Uh, armor piercing weapon values. So I'm gonna go straight to state issued armor and then a th um, and then we'll go to the state issued weapons. And then as for Wolfheart's skill point, I like to spend his initial skill points. We have two of them. I'm gonna go Inspiring Presence and Emperor's Finest because this is an extra four melee defense for all of my spearmen and swordsmen. Melee defense is a big deal in this campaign because the Lizardmen do a lot of damage to unarmored units. There's not anything I really need to build right now um, at the Scorpion Coast, and so I'm just going to, I mean, I guess I'll just go ahead and build this building because I don't have anything else to use my money on right now. Um, but you can kind of pick and choose this like to build this later because crossbowmen are kind of handy um, early in this because they are much better than bowmen with better range. We are ready for turn two. We obviously haven't recovered the casualties on all of our swordsmen, but we've got three new units, and we should be capable of killing the garrison at Chotek and taking the port for its extra value, which is also some of our objective. If you look up here at the top, it's going to be this acclaim, this bar of acclaim that we're trying to fill up, similar to the other bars you see in the Vortex campaign. And the way we do that is by unlocking hunters, capturing settlements, building ports, and you obviously don't want to lose territory because that's going to count against you. Um, and then this is the hostility meter. So the more we crank this thing up, the more the lizard men hate us and the more public order penalties um, that you get. And you can see the enemies gaining weapon strength throughout it too. So your enemies are going to become more hostile and more powerful. Um, and then there's also empire reinforcements, which we can't get yet. But as we start doing these things that gain a claim, it will help us continue to get um, more reinforcements. So if we capture um, a settlement from Laxland, we're going to get an extra 500. You want all the money you can get early in this Wolf campaign. Arms. Let's push Chotek. Kill to protect. You're going to see a couple of Saurus warriors and a spear rider here. So this army is nothing to turn your nose up at. We have to deal with it. All right, I'm going to show you my deployment. I've got all of my missile units deployed toward the flanks because I want to quickly get them in position to shoot the lizards in the back. That's going to be how you're most efficient in winning these battles. So that includes my free company militia. And even though these guys are capable in melee, do not put them into melee unless you have to. They cause more damage with their missile units. But you can see I have my swordsmen uh, surrounding my spears who are in the middle and then my weaker sword units on the flanks. And we're going to get things started. I've got my um, war wagon all lined up on the flanks as well. As long as you keep your war wagon away from um, javelins, you'll be in good shape. And you can see that the uh, the enemy has several javelin cohorts here, and we're going to have to focus those down uh, early. I'm going to bring Wolfheart back behind the line now because you can see these cold one spear riders definitely want a piece of him. The huntsmen, we're going to have to use their ammo properly. They are anti-large. We definitely want to use them against these cold one spear riders. I'm not loving the fact that those spear riders are going to just plow right into my sword. So I'm going to send the spearmen out to uh, intercept them a little. And I'm going to get all of my anti-large fire focused on them. We can't just sit back and eat all these javelins, but unfortunately I don't have a lot of choice. I'm going to send a weak sword unit in that direction. Or actually, you know what? Hold, hold your position. I hate to turn my back on them for a moment, but I'm going to have to. Let's use my archers, see if we can kill some of these uh, javelin cohorts. Let's fall back from these Saros warriors. We don't want this engagement over here. We've got to get these... Um, Let's pull the spearmen back. That's not the fight for them. We've got to keep the uh, fire going on the uh, large units. The Saurus warriors are going for my free company militia. I'm not going to allow that. So I'm going to intercept with the sword units. 
put the other one on this, uh... Actually, let's let the Spearman face that Jav cohort. And then this one face that. We need to get in here behind this, uh, Saros warrior and start pumping it full of lead. Okay, the, uh... The Cold One Spear Riders are slowly but surely dropping. So, again, we're just gonna keep focused. We're gonna send reinforcements in there. Let Wolfheart shoot them. There is nothing that Wolfheart can use his focus shot ability on in this battle, unfortunately. Okay, those guys are making a wasted charge right now. So you can see this this battle, if you underestimate it, you can quickly find yourself defeated. So this is why we wanted our units on the flank, because now we can just absolutely pump this Saurus warrior's guts full of lead and arrows. And you can see why we need to do it so quickly. They are easily overpowering our swordsmen still uh, with the difficulty settings and other stuff at play here. So now what we want to do is get Wolfheart in a good firing position. So I'm going to get him behind the line. The uh, Cold One Spear Riders are uh, rampaging into spears, so they shouldn't do too great. You can see at this point that our skirmish units are now starting to pay some extreme dividends. A Saros Warrior has been all but killed here. And I'm going to start using Wolfheart to shoot this other Saurus warrior from an angle that's advantageous to get the most penetration out of his arrows. And I'm kind of leaving this Huntsman here for a reason, because when that Swordsman fails, if I don't get reinforcements back in time, I'll engage it with the Huntsman so that Wolfheart can shoot it in the back. The Spear Rider's starting to get free, so we're going to deal with it. With uh, Wolfheart, okay, it's gone. We've broken their leadership, so see? Success. If you, if you let that fight go for too long, where you're um, just letting your infantry take it. You're going to die. You've got to get those skirmishers to the flank, and that is going to be one of the key f key focuses for you early in this Wolfheart campaign. Just real quick while we're loading out, um, 26 kills on a free company militia against Saurus Warriors is fantastic. So that's one of the reasons why I like free company militia. Especially when the Saurus Warrior doesn't have a shield, uh, the free company militia can really rip them up. Now... We get an opportunity here to, to occupy. We're not hurt for money yet, so we're just going to occupy. There will be times in the future where you may need to do some looting or sacking and occupying, but right now we're just going to occupy Shotek so that we can keep its uh, building level the way it is and not have to rebuild everything. We've now fully occupied the Scorpion Coast. That earns us 500 gold and completes a mission. It also increases hostility. <laughs> so now we need to maintain possession of two provinces um, through vassals or direct ownership. You're not going to do it through vassals right now. Which really means that our next objective here is Laxlen, Temple of Kara, and Lanex, uh, Lanexla. Um, and the reason why I say that too, there's multiple reasons. If we go up here to the quest, um, actually it's right here, Wolfheart's Hunters. There's a few things you can take note of. Um, it says if I'm at war with the Vampire Coast Mutineers, then I will get to unlock um, this, this first unknown hunter here. Um, and then it shows the other ones here and what you have to do to get them. So let's take a look. We have to get all the way to the northern spine of Stothek. Not going to be easily done at the moment. So that, that uh, dwarf is, quite frankly, a little bit out of the question. It, but it just says move a character. Okay, so a character. We don't have to move a whole army. So your strategy may be to unlock um, some of these and then send them that way. As far as Clara, raise the hostility level to very hostile. That's only a matter of time, and we'll see her. And then for the Paladin, we just have to move to this, um, this area over here. So there's a lot of easy ways to get you some powerful characters early in this campaign and start stacking them into Wolfheart's army. With our next skill point, again, Emperor's Finest. There may be people who feel like there's a better route, but my swordsmen are going to start to become quite powerful and at this point, with our swordsmen not having any chevrons, it's okay to pick them, merge, get all your units put back together, and then head into the recruitment. And we will go ahead and just draw on more swordsmen. So I'm going to, again, two swordsmen, one free company, until I get to the desired balance of swordsmen and free company militia. Now, as far as commandments go... I mean, public order is going to be very helpful, but it's not going to really stop the negative public order early on here. It will slow it. So I tend to go for this uh, income from trade and growth, mostly for the growth, because I want these settlements to grow faster. All right, if we recruit a unique hunter, we're going to get 500 more. 
And if we uh, raise the hostility level, we're going to get 500 more. Both of those can be accomplished by getting the hostility level up enough. <laughs> See where it says very hostile? So if we make it here, we're going to unlock Clara, and we'll get two 500 gold missions completed. Unflinching. And remember that the reason we raise that is settlements captured, ports or buildings upgraded, and hunters unlocked. And right now, we really want to focus on settlements captured. And the next settlement to capture will not be particularly easy, okay? Now, we could just declare war on the mutineers, and I will. And this will give us access to another, um, another character right away. So there we go. We've recruited the hunter. That gives us 500, and we get Van Hal. And it is going to make us at war with the Vampire Coast Mutineers, but I'm not terribly concerned about that because they're going to have to be dealing with Harkon. So I've now got uh, him in there, and then you can see that that's adding to our overall here. See, Hunter's unlocked, and we're headed more towards this very hostile. Um, so see, it says hostility. We're only, I think it means that we're only one turn away from hitting very hostile, which means we unlock another Hunter, which is Clara. And Clara is very useful at assisting Wolfheart and wrecking both large and lords from a great distance. I'm going to begin moving towards Laxlen over here. And we're going to continue to recruit. I'm going to, again, a couple more swords. And in this case, I already have two free company militia. I'm kind of thinking about adding a crossbowman. Um, they become very handy again when you can get to the flanks. The challenge you're going to be up against, though, is that you're going to have an insane number of infantry. Uh, the enemy is likely to spam a lot of skinks and a lot of saurus, so um, the crossbow though is very handy at taking down javelin cohorts and other skirmishers. I'm gonna just add one for now, and then after that, probably a little bit more free company militia or swords. You, you can't really have too many swords right now, folks. And as a further tip, you know, I just, I just thought of this and should have thought of it earlier. If you wanna just declare war on the mutineers as soon as you can, and I don't know exactly when you can do that because of the, the line of sight, but if you do that as soon as you can, you may get to have Van Hal in some of those battles that we already fought, and he will obviously make that easier. Now, there are different reinforcements that are now going to be available to us. We're going to take the knightly orders. This is what I like. Now, this is going to give us mobility that we can't otherwise get a hold of right now. So now I get three Empire Knights and two Pistoliers. This is going to give our army a whole bunch of new capability. Um, I do find that the archers, um, albeit are relatively affordable, are pretty useless this early in the campaign, but since I have enough room in my army, at least at the moment, I'm going to keep them. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring in these resupply. This is how you do that down there. You saw how the resupply comes. You get to pick. A steam tank is also good, but the upkeep on a steam tank is insane. It is very, very difficult to maintain, and right now three Empire Knights are going to be very worthwhile. <clears throat> this is going to hurt our... Um, it's going to hurt our upkeep cost a lot. Like, a whole lot. Um, the pistol ears are good um, and certainly can be used right now. We'll go ahead and pull them in as well. And you can see that now our income is down on the floor. We're going to keep moving this direction. Um, I do believe that I am going to go ahead and cut the archers because what I really need right now is just more swordsmen. This is going to push our upkeep to the brink. But trust me, we're going to need all these units because Laxlin is down here recruiting a whole bunch more troops, and then their settlement is walled, so we have to be prepared. I am going to go ahead and spend a little bit of my money to upgrade this to a coastal village, and you'll see why. Okay, uh, mission issued, research a technology. We were going to accomplish that in one turn, so we'll get more. So you can see all these different things you can do to get extra gold at the beginning. So research the technology... Um, build up to a coastal town, um, raise the hostility level. I mean, so all this different stuff we're working on, and you should do all of that because you're going to need the gold because of your upkeep cost hitting the floor. But now we have a pretty powerful army pretty early into this uh, situation. So what I'm going to do is I can't quite move into their, their um, realm and still maintain 50%. Um, so I can't raid, which you can do to earn extra, so I'm just going to go ahead and push Laxlin. See, look, they've already got a second army, they've got this one, and then they're going to have their garrison. So they're already getting ready to spam you, that's why I'm coming very prepared to this fight. Okay, we finished researching the tech, you pick up an easy 500 gold, which is going to be helpful because we're not earning much. The new mission is to search a ruined settlement for treasure. Uh, you can do that if you want. 
I mean, not going to be a huge deal. We've gotten uh, better leadership and speed for our infantry. Not going to hurt at all. And Chota or Laxlin is in a bad position right now. However, you can see, because of the way that things line up here, that it's going to say that they're still going to win this fight. So you're going to have to begin the siege. If, any, if you do end up fighting a siege, you're going to need towers. I think they'll come out and attack me by bringing this army back. And that is really what we want here. So we're going to hit continue siege, and we're going to end the turn. We want as many fights as possible. We want to capture settlements so we can drive up that hostility level, gain more acclaim, unlock more hunters. All right, they've done exactly what I want them to. I now get to fight all of their guys outside the walls. But again, look at this. This is four Saurus warriors with shields and two red-crested skink chiefs along with some red-crested skinks we got to fight. This is going to be a seriously potent lizard army, and we need to do our job well. All right, here we are on the battle map. I'm going to point a few things out. With the Lizardmen reinforcement coming in from up here, it's likely that the current small army that attacked us is going to be deploying way up here on the hill to get their friends into combat. Now, if I deploy right here, my flanks are secure, but do I really want a secure flank where the Lizardmen can just pummel me from head on, um, especially when I have cavalry and skirmishers? No, I really don't. I need to be able to hit the Lizardmen flank, and this will actually give them quite a bit of protection. So I do believe that they will deploy on the hill, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and take my infantry group, get them set up. I'm going to have the uh, the witch hunter be there to support. Uh, actually, all these skirmish units, uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stick them on a flank, and let's get the huntsman. Uh, I'm going to put one free company militia on this flank. And the crossbows can stay under the uh, the center of our formation. And I think that I'm going to leave them there with the uh, the Huntsman to shoot up Skink Skirmishers and um, and Skink Javelin Cohorts. Um, and then you can see that I'm going to split a Free Company Militia to either flank. And then we're going to put the War Wagon to one of the flanks. And then we can let the, uh, the Pistoliers... Um, they're going to do some work first because they can Vanguard deploy. But now see I've kind of got my main formation and then we got our Cavalry here as well. I'm going to deploy my Cavalry over here move them forward a little bit under the cover of that forest. So here's what my objective's gonna be. I'm gonna change my deployment to where we're gonna be kind of funneling the lizard men down and I'm gonna get them to where they no longer have a height advantage. I'm gonna bring them all the way down off the hill. They attacked me and then we're gonna leave enough room to maneuver here. Let's take our um, pistol ears. There is a red crested skink and skink chief up here who are pretty fair game to do some uh, skirmishing from my pistol ears right now. All right, otherwise we are mainly set up. Um, now that we have our main troops moved, I'm gonna get Wolfheart, the Witch Hunter, and this Free Company Militia into a group. And then I'm gonna ungroup this Free Company Militia over here. I do wanna go ahead and take all my skirmish units, like so. And if you put these guys into defensive stance, they won't go off chasing stuff. Holy crap, about to forget what's going on there. All right, so we're gonna allow these guys to start firing. The Red Crested Skink Chief actually isn't a uh, bad target here either. Let's go on and off fire at will. There we go. Let's go ahead and put some damage on that Skink Chief. Let's draw him over towards Wolfheart. And I can use this War Wagon because the enemy army is um, pretty far afield right now actually. So I'm going to actually move up the Free Company Militia. And we're going to really try and put a spank on, on these uh, units that took the bait here. Turn off fire at will, target the uh, Skink Chief. And I'm going to target the uh, infantry with my archers once they get close enough. Everything else I'm going to target the, uh, the Skink Chief. When the AI makes a mistake like this, punish him for it. That Skink Chief will not be easily hit by Wolfheart. Okay, now we're going to turn all our fire onto the Red Crested Skinks. I'll keep Workheart, Wolfheart shooting the uh, Skink Chief. But we're going to try and route these units for free, and we're going to accomplish it here. Now go ahead and kill the Skink Chief. And then same thing, you move up and see if we can kill the Skink Chief. Okay, let's reposition a little here. Reposition. 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 Okay. 
get repositioned. Unfortunately, we did not kill the Red Crested Skink Chief, but at least we basically made him irrelevant in the fight. And we took out a unit of Red Crested Skinks. We're now ready for Battle Phase 2. I'm going to start targeting Skink Skirmishers as soon as I'm able. Pull my War Wagon back. It does not need to take the shots off those Skink Skirmishers. Alright, Skink Skirmishers, you go die now. Okay, now I really don't want my Free Company Militia to sit here and take all these Javelins, so I'm going to back off. I'm going to make sure it's just my infantry. So that's Group 5. Group 5 can attack. I actually need a unit to take off some of these on this flank, because we have to get our flank secure. Let's move over here and start cleaning up units that are going to be on the extreme flank. Okay, let all these guys engage, and then swing around their flank. Oh, it's not good. We've kind of got an opening here. we got to unblob. Let's back up a little here and fill this hole. Alright, there we go. Again, we're going to take down Skink Skirmishers from back here. These, uh, these Skink Skirmishers have turned to face us, so we're going to have to focus fire them out real quickly. This, um, this group, oh, and we have our cavalry now that can come out and lay down some smash attacks. You all are probably like, air, why not the cavalry? Nah, I, I haven't forgotten them for too long yet. Okay, those skink skirmishers are about to die. Over here, my skirmish units in behind these skinks is going to cause massive damage. And then group two will swing around and try and put some damage into the main line because the skinks could break through. Okay, skirmishers are out. Let's move to the flank. Okay, we've cleaned up one unit on this flank. Send our infantry in. Send our skirmishers around the line. Let's get rid of some of these regrouping units real quick. The Empire Knights, things are actually going pretty well for us. There's a large, or let's kill this uh, Red Crested Skink Chief who broke through. He's going to get some cover from the woods, but I think we can down him before he gets into combat. Let's get all these guys positioned right behind the line. Yep, we did take out the Red Crested Skink Chief again. These uh, units need to continue to wrap up. The Empire Knights now should be able to help break the Saurus Warriors. Well, we have perfect uh, lines of fire right here. Let's kill this Red Crested Skink. Get our reinforcing uh, regroup units here. Yeah, you can see now this uh, Saurus with Spears is going to take extreme damage. Like I said, don't ever take these um, early Lizardmen armies for granted. They are actually quite powerful. Sometimes you're going to have to turn around and shoot the uh, regrouping units. But at this point, we're, we're dropping the enemy leadership very significantly. Okay, our cavalry cleaned up the Saurus in the middle. Let's use this uh, swordsman to just hold those few units. We've cleaned up this flank in its entirety. Attack that regroup skink unit real quick. There we go. So all that's left at this point is just a couple of little pockets of resistance. I don't want my pistoliers in that fight. I'm not sure how they've ended up in it. Let's get our bows focused on this blob. It's a great, great chance to cause a lot of damage. Um, let's get uh, Wolfheart's uh, little group here. And let's come in and get behind more of these units. This is a danger coming up behind us. Let's send our spearmen to intercept. And let's get our cavalry moving. Uh, fighting that Red Crested Skink Chief isn't going to do us any good. Let's go assist this fight over here. And uh, I'm going to continue pouring in fire from the Free Company Militia. Use our Pistoliers to see if we can clean that group up and melee. I'm really just trying to break the leadership of the Saurus here. I'm going to immediately pull back out of there and let my guys continue to fire. The Huntsman can stay in there. There we go. So we have pretty successfully cleaned up this fight. Um, what we're going to do is continue for just a moment and go run down some of these uh, units that were in that blob. And we're going to see to the death of this uh, Red Crested Skink Chief. So let's get Wolfheart to uh, 
to start chasing it. He fires at will while he's moving, and then same thing with um, with Van Helt. I'm gonna chase him and leave fire at will on, and then I'm gonna sick the war wagons on this guy as well. I'm gonna take this off, so hopefully he can follow. And then let's uh, get over here, chase down the skink cohorts, the Sara spear, and the Sara spear. The reason why I'm doing this is because you're still in a siege setup, and you need to kill as many of these units as you can. Because you're still going to be facing them in a siege battle. So you can see I'm going to kind of split up some of these units and chase down stragglers. I'm going to bring this one over here. Actually, let's bring it up the hill this way. We need to get one of our cavalry units to, to get loose and get ahead of this fight here. Because these guys are going to get off the battlefield. Boy, Wolfheart's slow. Skinks are actually pretty quick units. All right, we're going to try and cut off the retreat of these units here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to try and get this cavalry unit out in front. You can see here that very few of these Sara Spears are going to take home their lives. Come on. Run means run. See, I'm going to get all the way out in front of these units with a couple and then surround them so we can crunch them. And this is the last units that had any significant numbers left, really. Uh, that we're going to drive off the battlefield. So this kind of stuff is uh, quite necessary in the early campaign. You need to save as many casualties in the battles as you can see. I'm going to drive these guys into a different direction. I'm actually going to go over here and continue to get in front of them. Alright. And then we're going to head this way because now they're headed towards this white line. i got to go cut them off this way. The rest of these units can hit them from behind. This unit's about to escape. This one's getting crunched pretty good. Let's put our pistol ears on, on this unit. I'm going to get just one unit to stick behind on that one. Yeah, this unit's going to escape, unfortunately, but pretty successful cleanup, pretty successful battle. It calls it a close victory because of the number of infantry we lost. Right, but anyway, you can see the results there. Um, very successful. Very successful indeed. Alright, and at the end of the turn, the auto-resolve is now very much in our favor. We have a set of towers. All we gotta do is just hit the auto-resolve. And that's all I'm gonna put in this episode. I've showed you how, over the course of the first um, five to ten turns here, um, to take early command um, of your, of your uh, campaign. Now, you can kind of take your option here. I'm just gonna occupy... So we can keep it. Oh, look at that. We've got a potion of healing for Wolfheart. That's fantastic. So there we go. The hostility level is increased. And that also means that Clara joins the expedition. And we are now in good shape. We can just make some room for here, uh, her and the army here quite easily by merging some swordsmen. And uh, let's see exactly where she is right here. She's now in the army offering training. Um, just last couple of tips here, again, remember how we got started on this skill tree? Emperor's Finest is now complete, which means my swordsmen, um, especially once we finish this research on the armor and defense, my swordsmen are going to be extremely capable versus lizardmen forces. I now have mobility, I've got skirmish, and I have ways to take down enemy armies that outnumber me fairly consistently. Um, once you get Emperor's Finest, it's kind of up to you on what to do next. You may want to go ahead and start working on um, some of the abilities up here for Wolfheart. It does make him considerably more powerful. Um, or you can do some work on Pistol Core, which is going to start making your Pistol Ears and Free Company Militia much stronger. But again, that is a preference thing up to you all. That's how you be successful in Marcus Wolfheart campaign over the course of the first few turns from there on out. I will leave it to you. You will still have a lot of wars to handle. But I think that I've given you a handle on how to fight the basics early on. I do hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, get up there, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell if you want to see more because you'll be notified. And there will be more, folks. I will do a similar video if you all enjoyed this on the other campaigns to try and give you some advice on how to start there. Air of Carthage, signing out.